Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome to the WP Builds podcast. This is episode number 163 entitled How to Create Content with WordPress that People Really Want to Engage With. It was published on Thursday the 23rd of January 2020. My name's Nathan Wrigley and before we begin just a few little things, head over to wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe. Over there you'll be able to join us in every which way that we have imaginable. So for example, you can subscribe to our email lists. One will tell you when we've got a new podcast episode out, that's usually in audio format. And the other one will alert you when we find a WordPress related deal. We'll just send you a very short email. Anyway, wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe. Speaking of deals, if you head over to wpbuilds.com forward slash deals, you will be able to find a whole load of coupon codes for WordPress related products and services. It's a bit like Black Friday, but every day of the week. The last one I want to mention is wpbuilds.com forward slash advertise if you would like to get your product or service in front of a wider WordPress audience. A bit like GoWP have. GoWP is a white label WordPress maintenance company for agencies. With their pricing, it makes doing the maintenance yourself seem silly. One of their most popular features is the Visual Validator tool. It does visual checks on your site after plugin updates, so they know if something is broken immediately and can fix it before you or your client even notice. So do yourself a favour and check out GoWP at GoWP.com. And we really do thank all of our sponsors for helping us to put on the WP Builds podcast. Speaking of the podcast, you may or may not know that we usually release about three bits of content each week. The podcast that you're listening to now comes out on a Thursday, and then every Monday we release two bits of content. One comes out very early in the morning UK time, and it's about 30 minutes of WordPress news. I sum up the previous week's WordPress news. The other thing is that every Monday at 2pm UK time, I release with some friends and colleagues a live version of the WordPress news. So we go through the article that I've just mentioned and we tease out all of the best bits. And because it's live, you get to comment and it's usually me and two or three other notable WordPressers. And it's a lot of fun. So you can join us for that either in the WP Builds Facebook group or you can join us at wpbuilds.com forward slash live and you'll find all of the links there. Okay, let's get on with the podcast main event, shall we? Like I said, episode number 163. I'm joined by Miles Beckler this week, who is a bit of an internet marketing expert. He's been producing content for ages and it has become a bit of a money spinner for him. Um, This is not something that I'm particularly familiar with, so a lot of my questions are fairly basic, but it does tease out Miles's strategy for how it is that you go about deciding what kind of content you should produce, how to produce it, how long it should be, what kind of niche you might get into um, and and basically the whole gamut of what it is that you can do if you would like to become a content creator. Now, I suppose most of us in some way, shape or form do need to create content. Either that's bolstering your business or creating some kind of kudos in your niche or it might be that you wish to go full on in on internet marketing and makes something that's profitable out of something like affiliate links. Anyway, it's all contained in this lovely podcast episode with Miles Beckler. So I hope you enjoy it. Hello there. Welcome to the interview part of the WP Builds podcast. Glad you could make it this far. Thanks for joining us. And today on the line from Washington, all the way on the West Coast of America, we've got Miles Beckler. Hello, Miles. Hey, Nathan. Thanks for having me on. Now, Miles, as you can probably already appreciate, has spent a great deal of time making his audio sound fantastic. It literally sounds, to my ears anyway, like he's stood in the next room. I don't know if he's an audio geek or anything like that, but I do know that he's a sort of traffic and uh, conversion type of geek. So, Miles, what is it that we're going to talk about today? Why, Why have I got you on the podcast? Brilliant. Yeah, so my wife and I started a WordPress site back in 2009, And uh, to tie in your little audio comment, ultimately, we sell MP3s. 
my wife and I create uh, audio guided meditations. And that WordPress site through content marketing and blogging and keyword research has reached about 33 million people. It, it gets something to the tune of 5 million, 6 million people per year uh, visiting that site, mostly from Google. So that's our business. And then in 2016, I started teaching what we did to kind of create that successful business. I started on YouTube, just under my name, Miles Beckler. And I've done about 550 videos since 2016, teaching everything I know from search engine optimization to building funnels on WordPress and keyword research and all of it. And uh, that now has 100,000 subscribers. So I've accidentally stumbled into a second business, which makes me twice as busy. Um, but really, I'm there's so many, uh, I call them fake gurus. There's so many people trying to sell you courses, $2,000 courses on how to do this, that, the other. And I got frustrated with it. So I figured, you know what? I'm obviously the guy to just do something about it. And I've been teaching it 100% for free while my wife and I still grow our main business. And, nice. Yeah, that's really yeah. nice. Tell, tell me, did you, um, you were talking, speaking about gurus and stuff, did you, uh, on the road to discovering how to uh, create content that would be, you know, followed up and looked at and, and what have you, did you follow the path of any particular tutorial? Did you read any particular book? Or was this very much a question of, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to learn by myself, make all the mistakes as I go and learn from them? Absolutely. Uh, the, the mistake riddled path was the path we took. Um, a lot of times digging through forums, a lot of older forums, um, and just trying to figure out who's telling the truth, who's full of, uh, rubbish and, and just hours and countless hours. And then a lot of trial and error. I learned really early on how to do keyword research. There was an old keyword research tool called market, uh, market samurai for any old school heads out there. Uh, it was a brilliant tool and, and just understanding the basics of if we create content, title content based on what people are searching, surprisingly, it increases the likelihood of those people searching, finding it. Mm. It's, it's rocket science, I know. Um, but it was that idea that was like, oh, okay, so this is really simple. Let's just title it what they're searching versus titling it something random that we pull out of thin air and starting to see the traction happen. And then one of the smartest things I did was I didn't go looking for that next traffic source. I didn't go jumping to that next shiny object. I didn't listen to the everybody who said, you have to be over here and, oh, Snapchat, oh, Twitter's hot, oh, this is good and that's good. We just really went all in on the search engines. And you know, one of the benefits of WordPress plus search engine marketing is that the traffic compounds and the traffic we get today, we'll probably get 50,000 visits to that site, 40,000 visits to that site today. Most of that traffic's coming into blog posts Posts that we wrote two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, all the way down the line. And man, that's that's my kind of business model. So we, we kind of stumbled into that. Um, I had some failed business attempts before that. But once we found that which worked, we just kept doing it over and over and over. Okay, we'll maybe get onto that in a moment. But I, one of the things that you always see, especially with the in inverted commas gurus is the basically the short circuit, the quick way to, to, um, to hijack the process to make it quicker to make it more profitable. From what you're saying, that sounds like it's complete nonsense. You've got to, you know, you've got to put in your, your due diligence, you've got to do the work, you've got to spend the hours doing it. And then and only then after a period of time will you reap the reward. You know, I mean, there is definitely the potential for flash in the pan victories, leveraging loopholes and doing maybe gray hat things, but you're never going to build a real sustainable long-term business. I mean, I got two houses. I got like a summer place and a winter place. Like I'm paying off mortgages. I'm filling up retirement accounts. Like this is not um, like haphazard. I'm building a real actual digital media and digital publishing business. So through that lens, I can't allow myself to be distracted by something that might have a big spike but surely will drop off. And a great analogy is like, think of, think of a great footballer who comes out into the end of the league and they've just got this new move. And for the first season they're out there, no one can stop this guy and they're just dominating. But what happens? People watch their tape, people study it. Other people pick up on this little tactic and no longer, it's, it's no longer a tactic. It no longer works anymore. What wins championships it's fundamentals. It's really simple stuff done extremely well um, with a, a group of people who are fired up and passionate about what they're doing, right? So 
I'm, I guess I'm just much more of a fundamental kind of person because I think fundamentals are how we really get that long-term victory. And I want to build it once and I've rode way I've ridden waves, uh, flash in the pan victories, make 10 grand off of this little loophole and then it all falls apart. I've seen entire businesses in the days of Penguin and Panda and Hummingbird updates. I knew a guy, $40,000 a month business to zero overnight because of one Google update. And we survived that and I'm going to survive every freaking update that's coming because I'm by the book and I'd rather take the longer path. I think the long path is the shortcut is kind of the secret to life. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's about where we're at. Yeah, that's good. I like it. I like the I like the description there. The um so the process for you is you're you're using WordPress as a tool to publish your own content, but it sounded like you were also obviously whether you fell into it or you designed it that way, you've also ended up putting stuff out on YouTube, um, tutorials and so on and so forth. Is there are there any other platforms that you use that uh, benefit massage your your business? Yeah. So my wife's really good at social media marketing and, you know, social signals play a part in search engine optimization, but not nearly as much as like the on page and off page signals. The main reason why I use YouTube is I really don't, um, or maybe didn't, I, I enjoy it more now, but I really did not enjoy the process of crafting content in the written word. Um, I didn't like English class. I didn't, I, I just, I don't like writing that much. Mm. Uh, I'm learning now. So but with that said, you know, this moment, you and I just wrapping up on a microphone, we're just shooting the stuff, shooting the breeze. I love this. And I found that I could turn the camera on, which was actually my cell phone when I started and I could hit record and I could just brain dump an idea relatively efficiently. It didn't take me that much time. I got the idea out. I'm, I'm relatively coherent working on getting more coherent with every video. And so it was, I, I found that I'm just, it's easier for me to communicate through the video or audio medium. So I leveraged that. Now I have a team of people who transcribe my audio through temi.com, yeah. T-E-M-I, yeah. um, brilliant service. It's like a 10 cents a minute. Yeah, we and use then, that for this podcast actually your, your words Perfect. will be transcribed yeah <laughs> by them um, yep. good to know it's the family and then I have a copy editor who kind of uh, transcriptions are really difficult to read uh, it's not blog content so I have a copy editor who massages the content and turns it into blog posts and then we publish it on my blog so now my blog is actually getting about 40,000 visits per month from the content that I'm initiating through videos. And really the only reason I'm doing the videos is because it's the only thing I can do. I'm kind of a one trick pony. That's my fundamental, right? If you're a, if you're a good shooter, just do what you do. Don't try to go play defense, do what you do. And that's what I found with this. And I'm just doing that. And I've surrounded myself with a team of people who can pick up those other positions that are required to get me onto that search engine. But ultimately I'm a search engine marketer. YouTube and Google are both search engines and my videos I did in 2016 and 2017 are still driving traffic. They're still connecting me to new people. They're still growing my list and they're still making me money. And yeah. I like that residual results from efforts I did in the past. Do you um do you feel uh, you're sort of going off message slightly a little bit? Do you feel that YouTube um will remain uh, I mean I, I can't see Google going anywhere. That just seems at this point in time too much of a tall order. But um, rival platforms, you know, YouTube, and suddenly this thing TikTok has come along and um, and kind of upturned the apple cart a little bit. Do you still do you still hold YouTube in high regard? Do you think that ten years down the line, YouTube will still be the the dominant platform for video creations? So I think that's a great question. And as of now, and what I'll say is short term, which I'll call like three to five years, I don't see anything on the horizon that that is potentially going to dethrone YouTube. Um, YouTube, like Facebook always touts their two billion active users. There's like 1.9 billion monthly active users on YouTube. It is a massive search engine. Yeah. And a lot of people searching for how to actually start on YouTube which is kind of crazy. So if I want to learn how to fix something, if I want to learn how to edit something, if I know nothing about JavaScript or PHP code, but if I need to learn a little bit about that, I'm probably going to go look how to do this in PHP on YouTube because I want to follow them along on their screen. Yeah. So at this point, I think YouTube is here. The one kind of interesting change that's going on in our society are these deep fake videos and the ability and with our processing power for the ability for people to create fake videos mm -hmm. where you know barack obama is it ain't barack obama saying things but the video sure likes barack obama looks like he's saying things 
um, were there, I think you get what I'm saying, right? Like yeah. the deep fake video idea. Okay. So what, to take this one step farther, I believe that blockchain potentially is going to be leveraged with video to somehow yep. add a little bit of metadata to the video to, and then it puts it on the blockchain. So it says for sure, this was actually an original video yep. Got and it. there's going to need to be a way at some point for us to verify is this, was this actually a Barack Obama video or not? And I think blockchain might be leveraged for that in the future. And I think that would be the opportunity out of crisis of all these fake videos going everywhere that a new technology would emerge from that that would have that next layer. And I think it would be built on blockchain. But I, I don't see anybody even creating something resembling that. That's the only theoretical. That's my sci-fi <laughs> tinfoil hat idea. Of yeah, the yeah. No, it's really interesting. Yes, yeah, some sort of trust certificate, some sort of, right. um, you know, it puts it on the ledger and the blockchain then ver verifies this video is was at least produced in the uh, you know in the account of Barack Obama whether whether it's or not gone. that is yep. in. yeah I actually saw a video of Mark Zuckerberg the other day talking about um, himself and it was I can't remember if it was a Star Trek reference anyway as the video went on it became pretty clear that this was not Mark Zuckerberg it Ooh. was you know it, it wasn't even him the, 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 the words sounded convincing but the, yep. the the video itself looked exactly like him and then you realized halfway through because of the words that were coming out of his mouth wow not only is that not his voice but that's not him. They've just absolutely made it up. And uh, if the sound was off and I hadn't actually heard the words, uh, 100%, I was hooked. I was convinced it was true. The crazy thing is it's some 14-year-old kid yeah, who has yeah. these high, high yeah. processing graphics cards that are just yeah. there. So I think this is a new challenge that's emerging. And, you know, mentioning Zuckerberg, Facebook attempted to go after the video world. Facebook actually thought they were going to compete with YouTube. Uh, if you publish a YouTube link on Facebook, they totally won't give it the engagement. Uh, but they want, they want native video. Facebook is not going to become a video platform because it's so search based. Yeah. And that's where the Alphabet Corporation, which is Google and YouTube both, you know, that algorithm on YouTube is really, really similar to that algorithm on Google. And boy, algorithms run our lives. When we can't find something, it frustrates us. So people are, it's going to be really difficult. There's going to have to be some uh, intense thing or some major pain that's going to force people to change their video viewing habits, I believe. Yeah. So, okay. So we're all in on WordPress. We're all in on uh, creating your own content in a way that, um, you know, that you can keep control of linking it back from other venues like YouTube and so on. And we think that YouTube is, is going to be the platform of choice in the future. Let's, uh, let's change tack a little bit and we'll, we'll talk about, okay. So let's make the assumption that I am new to WordPress. I have this red hot idea. I don't know what that is. You, you, you could perhaps make up a subject and, and run with it. Um, I have this red hot idea for something that I want to get into, a niche that I've discovered, something that I'm interested in, but I'm right at the beginning. I've, I've produced no content whatsoever. With your experience over the years of driving all this traffic, I'm, I'm interested to go through the process from like day one to the end of, let's say, year two or three or something, to the point where I'm looking back and thinking, boy, I'm so glad I did all of that stuff to, uh, to create uh, engagement and to create visibility. Visitors. So let's go right back to the, the beginning. What, what do we what do we do on day one? Where does it all begin? Yeah, and I love that you have a three year, two to three year time horizon. Yeah. I think so many people have like that's the first thing is let's get real about the process that we're undertaking here. Let's let go of all of the hypey promises from the guru webinar and realize that a successful business online is based on giving value to others. And the more people we reach with valuable messages and the bigger value we help them with, right? If you help me with a $5,000 problem, I'm going to value that more than if you help me with a $5 problem. Um, so that's the, the goal, right? I call it being of service at scale. And that's what WordPress has the ability to do is through Google, we can literally scale our messages. So from there, you've got a random niche and I don't care if it's you know, electric lawn care. Or, Let's go with that. That's perfect. I love yeah, it. <laughs> or quiet lawn care, right? Because yeah. you know people out there, they're tired of hearing their neighbors with their gas lawn blowers and their lawnmower and it's just the noise and nobody likes it. So you like the electric tech. So you're going to go all in on that. So the first thing to do is to, number one, I always start with a brainstorm. 
it's a brain dump and I'm trying to go two levels deep. Um, people use mind maps. It doesn't really matter how you do this, but what's that? The core buckets that your content's going to lie in. Okay. So there's lawn mowers, there's uh, weed whackers or string trimmers, there's uh, edgers, there's hedge trimmers, right? So what are all those buckets? And then under each one of those, what are all of the actual search phrases that people are searching for? And what you end up with is, and then you got to put it in a notepad file at some point or just like a, a document. And what you end up with is all these crazy, crazy keyword phrases like best electric lawnmower for garden with hills, best electric lawnmower for large lot, best electric lawnmower for muddy terrain, right? And I'm, I'm obviously a yeah, little out I of my element. Yeah. 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 So, so you just come up with all these random things and it's like, okay, these are all of the potential ideas that people are going to search for. Now, in this example, we're playing affiliate marketing straight up. And and my wife and I, we sell more of our products. But in this example, someone who's searching for the best electric lawnmower for hilly terrain, they're ready to buy a lawnmower. You know the the search intent of that phrase means they 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 already are convinced they want an electric one. Because if they weren't, they would be looking for something like electric lawnmower versus gas lawnmower. Mm. And now they have three or four steps or decisions to make before they actually buy something. But when they're looking for the best electric lawnmower, you know they want that. And then it's for hilly terrain. Now that's a, what, a six word, that's a long tail keyword phrase as we call it. Mm. Um, so if you have a post that literally reviews the best lawnmower for electric lawnmower for hilly terrain and you do some basics of optimization you eliminate most of the competition because most people don't go that specific with their content and you increase the likelihood of ranking because you're so specific to that exact search phrase google loves when the search intent matches you're probably going to get the heck and they're probably going to be ready to buy which means you know well-placed affiliate link could make that sale and make that profitable so we have this big list of ideas that came out of abstraction. We just searched it and mind mapped it or wrote it down or did whatever. Then you need to plug it all into a keyword research tool. Okay. And you could use something free like Keywords Everywhere, which is a Chrome plugin. Uh, or you can use something paid. I prefer uh, KW Finder, Keyword Finder. It's a... Uh, 40 bucks a month, um, 29 if you pay for a year and it ranks how many searches per month and what's the difficulty of the phrase. Just, just to and pause from, you there for a second, because yep. I think a lot of people, you know, on behalf of their WordPress clients, we, um, we talk about SEO and th this is one of the conversations that we already have, you know, create content that actually matches up to, to search criteria. People are actually searching for this. Don't bother writing for the things that you think they're searching for because they're probably not. Um, so why, what, what is it that you, so this particular tool that you mentioned, which was $40 a month, what, what is it that you particularly like about that tool? What are the, what are the metrics and the data that it's giving you that, that you believe is of value? So the most valuable thing is the simplicity of the interface. Okay. Um, it shows everything I need to see right there. I can get in and out of that tool within about five minutes max. Yep. And that's browsing around. So they show very clearly they run a keyword difficulty score, which is obviously a proprietary algorithm. They look at the Moz data. They look at the Ahrefs data or the Majestic data. So they're pulling the SEO data from several different indexes that are very expensive. They crunch the numbers and they try to tell you with a very simple green, yellow, or red, and there's orange in there between yellow and red, uh, green, like go for it. This is going to be easy or red. This is going to be a really difficult keyword phrase to go for. And I can actually search, I can sort by difficulty. So what I'll go in and do is type in um, best electric lawnmower and I'll search that and then it'll pull up a huge list of ideas and then I sort by difficulty and I just go straight to the lowest difficulty phrases and I'm looking at the ones in the, the 10, 12, 15 difficulty score level and I just start looking through for one that has, I don't know, 300 volume a month, 500 searches, 2000 searches a month that has extremely low difficulty. Okay. And I'm always going to go after the low difficulty before going after the big champion two word keyword phrase that, that, you know, might give me 75,000 visits a month, but the odds of me ranking for that are tiny because yeah. of all the massive competition. The, um, the, does it offer, I think you, were, I think you were suggesting this a moment ago, but I wasn't entirely clear. Does it offer suggestions, uh, sort of synonyms, if you like, um, similes, synonyms, I'm not quite sure what the right word is, uh, variations on the same search. So for example, if it you does. were electric lawn mowers for hilly terrain or whatever, it would give you, uh, uh, okay, what about this or this or this? Because yep. these sound similar. 
Yep, absolutely it does. And then um, another tool that's great to get those kinds of suggestions would be Answer the Public. Um, and answer the public, you go to the domain name and there's this creepy old dude, like impatiently waiting for you to enter a search phrase. I don't know why they did that branding wise. Um, <laughs> but it'll give you all, so you can just have an electric lawnmower and it'll give you every question people search about riding lawnmowers. So it can actually help you facilitate growing this mind map really quickly. And it helps you flush out a lot of, uh, data, but then you don't get the actual search volume from that tool. You got to go plug it into yet another tool to get the volume. Because again, we, we want date, we want to use we want to use creative thinking to get our, you know, use empathy. Let's get in the mind of that garden owner, that guy with the backyard, and he's got three acres. You know, America, we got some pretty big lots up here, and he's got hills. And, you know, where is he? What's he thinking? We empathize with him when we're kind of abstractly thinking about what he might search for. But then once we have a list of things we think he might search for, we then go cross-reference data. And from that point on, we, we want data to drive our decisions. And when, when we, we take steps in that direction, we're just – every post can become an asset that drives a bit of traffic. That, because that's nice. I've not, not heard it explained that way. I like the, the sort of creativity followed by data crunching. That's interesting. Yeah, I Absolutely. Like, I like the way you've described that. So, um, okay. So, okay. We, we've got this phrase. We've been into the, the tool that you mentioned, which – could you say its name again? Because I've forgotten. So keywords everywhere that is it. the free, that's the free browser add on plugin. And what it does is it, it overlays all the search volume when you're searching every day in Google. So you just do your normal Google search and yep. pull a little sidebar. Um, and then KW finder is the paid one okay. that I prefer. I think professionals, content marketers, it, it is by far, I've tried them all. Um, and it's relatively inexpensive compared to some of the Ahrefs and the SEMrushes and the yep. other tools. Okay. Yeah, great. So, so we've used those tools, and we've come out with um, you know a, a few solid suggestions of, of phrases that we we ought to be uh, creating content for. At this point, how many? You know, again, we're we're right at the beginning of the journey. We're on day one or day two by this point. How many pieces of content would you be um, hoping to produce from from all of this? Um, bearing in mind that it's it's just me. I'm a I'm a solo person. Yeah. So so one. Okay. Just oh, okay. Get All right. One done. And I think this is where a lot of people overwhelm themselves. They'll build this list of like 347 keyword phrases and they're all excited and they just, it's like the, the salesman who just sharpens pencils all day and doesn't pick up the phone and they're, they're doing all this busy work. That's not actually the work because it's not the research that makes the difference. It's the action. It's the actual publishing. Uh, it, it, the trick is to choose one and write something, the best damn thing you can and, and then do it again and choose another and then write the best damn thing you can and then do it again. Because at this point, if you're just starting, you probably suck at writing. You probably have no clue how to use the Gutenberg publishing editor, right? Like you don't know anything. So we got to get you through the motion a few times. I like to challenge people to do a 90 day challenge. Um, and this is for someone who has enough free time and that's a post a day every day for 90 days. I started my YouTube channel with 120 videos in 120 consecutive days. My first videos were absolutely terrible. By day 120, I was, I was pretty good, man. I was competent at that point. It's mm. practicing the fundamentals. So really, it's choose one that you know enough about to, to just wing it and go and, and get some content out there. I do recommend looking at Google, going, searching that exact phrase, look at what's already ranking, open up the first three, four, or five, copy the, the content they have, throw it into a word count, find out how many words on average the top five have, we want to, Google wants to see parity. Google wants, if, if the average of the top five on Google are sitting at 1500 words and you write 630 words, there's no chance you're going to rank mm. because Google is clearly showing us through what Google put up there that it thinks 1500 words on average is required for the top half of page one. So do what Google's showing us. And if you want to get really geeky, monitor how many H2 tags, H3 tags, how many images, right? You literally can go parody with everything. Um, and if, if we have advanced SEOs who are like, ooh, this is smart stuff, because it is, there's a tool called uh, Page Optimizer Pro. Uh, a high, high-end SEO guy built this tool. It's a super geeky tool. It is not a beginner tool, um, but I highly recommend it. Um, Kyle, Kyle Roof with High Voltage SEO put that together, and it's, it's a pretty tricky, fancy little tool for finding what that parity is for all of the main data points on a, on a post. 
Ah, it's fascinating. So it goes right into all the levels of, you know, how many H2s and how long was the text in that H2 and how many H1s and how, where how were the images boards? placed and all that. Wow. How many images, how many bolds, how many alt text, how many italics, okay. how many <laughs> how many internal links. And yep. he looks at, so he looks at about 15 to 20 ranking factors. There's another tool called Cora, C-O-R-A. Um, Ted, I forget his last name, starts with a K. Um, he looks at like 300 ranking factors on every post wow. and he will tell you you need three more of these and two more of those but at that point you're if you don't know what that like that's for really high-end seos mm. um, they know what that tool is at that level but i think the the page optimized pro is a good tool to help you relatively quickly get an idea of because it, it allows you to see a structure okay so if you do this little bit of research first you're like okay i need 1500 words i need four h2s i need 15 things bold well now you know that like like an essay there's your intro, there's your four main sections, a little bit of content on each of those sections, and it allows you to almost build an outline based on what Google is already ranking. Yeah, yeah. Increasing your likelihood of Google liking what you published. Yeah, that's a really good point. So, okay, so we've produced the first article, and you say that you've got this this 90-day cycle is is some sort of sweet spot. You know, it doesn't end your life, but also it's a, it's a distant milestone right at the beginning, which gets you proficient and gets you into the swing of what you're doing. Should day two, three, four, five, six, right up to day 90, should they be cold, isolated from each other pieces of content? Or as, as the content is building up, should should we be um, worrying about, you know, creating backlinks or in some way linking the previous work to this work? Or are we just after yeah. totally isolated works all around electric lawnmowers, obviously, but, you know, not necessarily related to one another? Or should we be making an effort to link these pieces? That's a brilliant question. And it is a best practice to connect your content that is relevant on your site. Yep. Um, I've heard, again, this is from Kyle, who he spoke uh, at an event I was speaking at, two internal links of the same value are worth the equivalent of one external link. Okay, and we all know backlinks run the internet. Uh, so two internal links is just like getting a backlink. So the more we do internal linking, the better off our content is, the better Google can crawl our site, the better Google could build relevance to all of our different topics. We're going down the path of essentially building SEO silos, which are great. It's a way to structure content to really push relevance in one specific direction. But with that said, if it slows you down because you're completely new and it keeps you from making tomorrow's post, ignore it. Yeah. Because the goal is to flex the muscle enough times in a row to go from this hurts, this sucks, I don't really know what I'm doing, this is awkward, is this going to work, all the way to I think I'm getting it. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Yeah. Wow, I really like this post, right? It's it's creating a habit at first is the biggest thing for people to do is, is just get in that process of publishing. And if, if a post a day every day is too much to take on, I recommend like a 90 week challenge where you're like, what can you do? Can you do three posts a week? Great. Do that for 90 weeks, which is just under two years. You'd be amazed at what you can create in that time frame. Um, because again, it's, it's that fundamental. And there's so many little skills that are coming to play here. The keyword research, the, the empathizing, the kind of getting in the mind and the shoes of your, your target audience, how to write, how to use the Gutenberg editor, how to publish, how to edit, how to, like all these little things. But if you do them 40, 50, 60 times in a row, you gain competence and it all becomes easy. And it doesn't take you three hours a day. It now takes you an hour 20 a day. Yeah. And you've just freed up that extra time. So now you can start to think of things like internal linking and doing these other things to, to better optimize. Um, and then so going into like Search Console, and I think it would be smart for us to maybe um, shift and talk about a, a situation where someone has been blogging and they have 100 posts, and they haven't been optimizing it. Um, because that's where you get to after 90 days, right? Yeah. You've got this body of work, and you're like, okay, uh, I made all that stuff. I don't, I don't know. What, what do I do now? And a lot of bloggers started their blogs, or a lot of WordPress people started writing, and they, don't, they didn't think about this stuff, and they don't really know what to do from there. Yeah. Um, just before we get onto that, I'm going to tell you an anecdote sure. which popped into my head. As soon as you said the word 90 days, uh, which is probably about 10 minutes ago, the I, I was talking to a 
uh, a guy the other day. So this is nothing to do with work. And um, I was buying something online and I, I wanted to know uh, ha- how it would arrive and so on when it came to my house. So I phoned up the company and I just got chatting to this guy and turns out he's got a WordPress site. So that, that was interesting. We got into that conversation and I was sort of saying, oh, your, your website looks great and so on and so forth. And uh, and he said, yeah, it's it's just this business. It's just taken off. And I was like, oh, that, okay, that's fascinating. How, how come? And he literally said to me, Okay, I knew nothing about the area that I'm working in. Um, and I sat down and I wrote 90 pieces of content over 90 days. That those, like, this is going to sound so contrived. That is exactly what he said. And I promise Miles did not speak to me about this before. And he said, and I, I was a bit lousy at it to begin with. I got into the swing of it. And within his his business is now two years old, and he's he's now a multi million dollar um, you know turnover business every year, and he he puts his entire success starting from cold down to this process of writing because that's what got him on uh, indexed by the search engines, and his his yep. whole business is online sales. He doesn't he he has a, a showroom for the product that he sells, but he never lets anybody know. He has to have it for compliance purposes. There has to be the showroom, but nobody ever walks through the door. And so, when you said ninety days, and you began talking about that, this guy popped into my head. So there's a there's a real world anecdote which kind of backs up from my perspective anyway what you've just told us. That's brilliant. And you know, the other side of what it forces you to do is you got to read more. You got to, you got to become an expert, right? And people want to follow experts. Most people and and anyone listening to this is not most people, right? You and I, we aren't most people. We're, we're a little bit more ambitious than most people. But for most people, the last book that they read was a book that their instructor told them to read at uni. Hmm. And that's it. Once they're done with uni, they're done reading, right? So you could go into any niche. And if you read three or four books, if you keep your finger on the pulse of the blogosphere of what's going on uh, for 60 days and you read every new article published, you're literally going to be one of the top 5% smartest people in that space Mm. just from reading a handful of books. And then if you actually go publish your ideas on what you learned, A, we learn better when we write. Okay. Writing is actually a opportunity to learn. It's not necessarily a communication expression. Mm. Um, then you're literally one of the top 1% of people in that space. Yeah. yeah. Within months, within reading a few books, just because most people don't want to. And what that guy who is or gal who's searching for the best electric lawnmower for Hills is hoping they find is someone they trust who appears to be an expert or an authority on electric lawnmowers who has done the hours and hours of research for them who they can trust their decision so I, the searcher, don't have to spend five hours looking at Amazon reviews, which mower am I going to get? I don't know. It's a waste of time. I just want somebody to tell me, I want an expert to tell me which one is the best. Mm. And in, in and my case, facilitate that. yeah, that the, in my case, the, the reason that I ended up with this company was a, because obviously by this point, a couple of years down the track, they've got a, they've got a presence, you know, so if you search for the product name, uh, it's like the generic brand of whatever this thing is, you you search for that. They come up fairly high up. But also then I was actually sort of confused about what it was that I needed. And there's various attachments that you can buy for this thing. And uh, so I was searching around for that. And that's where he got me. It, the reason I selected his company was because he's he'd written all the how-to articles of, okay, if yep. you've got this problem, here's what you need to do. And then he would explain it in like ridiculous detail and, and so, subliminally, I think that's what sucked me in. You know, I just thought, okay, guys tried, you know, I appreciate what he's done. And he was on the phone that helped as well. Um, Well, he clearly knows what he's talking about. He's clearly analyzed this from all of these specific angles that I care about. Let me jump on the phone with him. And then he answered the freaking phone, right? He's not, this is so key because a lot of people think we're, oh, there's my opportunity to hide behind my computer, never talk to someone again and make millions of dollars online. No, we still have to be real people because there's that next level of it too. Um, yeah, that's brilliant. I, I, I'm, I'm, you've got me on pins and needles yeah. to learn what is this. Well, that I will we're tell you. I will tell but... you later. The reason I don't want to go into it is because I, I don't want to appear. Don't to want to blow sort of, them yeah, up. I don't, well, I just don't want to appear <laughs> to promote a particular like random company that's got nothing to do with right. WordPress. But I'll tell you at the end. So yeah, okay, let's move forward. So we've done this. We finished this ninety-day cycle, this hundred-day cycle. We've got all this content, and I can imagine at that point there's this great sort of sigh of relief. You've completed the marathon. You feel very good about yourself, and then presumably there's a. It's either working at 
at this point or it needs more maturation and you need to push it some more, maybe create some more content, uh, start yeah. looking at the data and what have you. So I'm wondering where, where do we go there? Where do we go after yeah. the initial 90 day phase? Well, so here you've actually, because you said you've completed the marathon. This is a sprint. You've completed the sprint. The marathon is the next five years of blogging okay. several times a week. So yeah. on my YouTube channel, for example, I do three videos a week every week, and I have for two and a half years now. Um, so that I call it the marathon runner's pace that we need to get to. Um, at the beginning, you should have Google search console, which is google.com forward slash webmasters. And you should have analytics set up in your account. They should just be tracking things. You don't ever have to look at them until this point. Um, once you go in and look, there's a few places you want to look for. Number one in analytics, just browse through and see if you have any spikes. We're looking for spikes. What does, what seemed to work haphazardly from just me doing the baseline of effort to try to learn these systems, what just kind of worked. And then we want to figure out how to do more of that because what it means is that the users clicked on you more for that and Google showed you more for that. We don't try to figure out why people drive themselves insane trying to figure out why, why won't Google rank me for that? Why did that? Who cares? I don't know. Google is crazy. It is what is, therefore, let's just react to the data point we have. So if you find out that you did all this lawnmower stuff and yet the electric hedge trimmer and the electric leaf blower posts are crushing it, go do more content about those. Mm. Clearly, it just worked, so follow what's working. That's the step one. But number two, inside of Search Console, you want to go look at the posts that have high numbers of impressions. This means they're being displayed on the search engines, but have low click-through rates. Okay? Yep. I'm going to say that again. Yep. We're looking for the posts that they're, they're getting displays, which means they're probably on the top of page two or they're on the bottom of page one. Humans are seeing them, but they're not clicking on them. You can see your average click-through rate for your site. So it'll be like, oh, your site average is 4%. And you'll find this post that has 30,000 impressions, but it has a 1.1% click-through rate. And then you optimize the title and the description. Hmm. And that's it. All you need to do is tweak your title and tweak your description. So how do we do this? Well, first, we go to Google and we type in that keyword phrase again. And we look, okay, what's working? What's sitting on top? Because that's clearly working. Google thinks it's working. Humans think it's working. The moment humans stop clicking on it, Google's going to stop showing it. That's just how Google's algorithm works. So what did they do? Is it Are they all doing like the top seven? Or is everybody the top seven and you have the top three? Well, if you have the top three and what's ranking is top seven, go make the top 15. Flush mm. that thing out. Make it more enticing. Make it. This is where copywriting comes in. I hate the word clickbait um, because that, by definition, means that you're not delivering on the promise. But I, I think we need to be almost a little more clickbaity with our titles. Um, just a little more emotional content, a little bit more curiosity inducing. Um, we need to deliver on any promises we make. I think that should be a given uh, in the title and the description. But ultimately. It's those two fields. And when you are able to get more, get a higher click through rate percentage than the people above you, Google will move you up in the rankings. Mm. It really is that simple. Google's just monitoring, okay, here's a list of 10. Why does everyone choose number four? I don't know, but maybe we should move that to number three. Why does people choose number three over number two? Well, maybe we should move that up to number two. And there is a direct correlation between click through rate and ranking on the first page of Google. The, um, the the next question I've got is about, you know, the, the, well, I've got two questions. The first one is about the success of this thing. So let, let's say that 90 days, 100 days, whatever, a year in, we're, we're feeling successful. We've got into the habit of writing posts, but now our business is taking off and the idea of writing posts has become the antithesis of what we want to do. We want to focus on our business. Is there a point, a swing in the pendulum at some point where you think, okay, now I need to pay somebody to do this. Is that is that ever a good idea? Do you lose your voice in that? Do you lose your connection? to this whole SEO thing or or do you believe that a, a, a sensible time is reached where it's okay let somebody else do that um and and how do you go through that process is there a lot of coaching involved or do you just sort of say right get on with it great questions and you know for the right type of person and for the right business it, it's day one is when you start that to be honest yeah, with you yeah. I mean you can hire a content marketing manager and go so I've started recently a um 
It's a case study. It is an affiliate review site, similar to what we're talking about here. It's built on WordPress and it's going to be, I'm I'm essentially just going to help people find what they're looking for in a specific niche of products. Um, And I'm documenting each month. Here's how many posts we're writing. Here's how much income it makes. Here's the traffic. Uh, We're we're literally like 1.5 months in right now and um, just getting started. 100% 100% of this content is going to be outsourced by other people. Uh, I'm testing external teams, but I think I'm going to hire an in-house writer because the external teams, the quality keeps fluctuating. So I think I'm going to bring a guy in. He's about $27 US an hour for writing services. There's a lot of English majors out there who don't really know how to make that much money, and they would love a job that allows them to work and travel. I mean, the whole digital nomad culture, like yeah. it's huge. Yeah. Um so, so yeah, I think there is a point with that now. I'm my milesbecker.com is a personal brand. Okay. My wife's site is a personal brand. So the content is absolutely a reflection of me. So there's been a lot of coaching on, I would never say that, or, you know, really kind of helping them understand my voice, which is why I like to have the same person work on my content. So the three years of teaching them pays dividends. Yeah. Um, but like best lawnmower review, uh, like, I don't know, you just need somebody who gets that stuff, yeah. right? You, yeah. you can find like a, a, a mom or a dad who just, you know, I don't know, like it, it's not a, an incredibly high value skill per se. Um, so yeah, as soon as possible, I think is good to get help with that. You could also start to potentially outsource pieces of the puzzle, which would be researching and outlining posts is something that a virtual assistant could do. And then also the final kind of uh, polish of the words, like the final proofread is something someone else can do. So you have the ability to look at it from a systems perspective and you still do that core middle content because it's your voice, it's your brand and, and you're you are the expert. Well, great, but you don't have to do all the research. You don't have to do all the internal linking. You don't have to do all of the proofreading. You could pass those pieces off to people who are faster, and you could stay focused on that one part of the job that 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 is your core, and let other people do what's their core. And as a team, you can get a lot more done more efficiently. Yeah. Um. G- going back to the beginning, where, where we started, right at the beginning, I was describing the the sort of solo person who is right at the beginning of this road, never done this before, no experience, and so on and so forth. Um. I'm wondering if failure is an option here you know if, if failure is is one of the things you've got to weigh up in this whole thing you know does it do, do you believe that anybody is capable of doing this is there a particular a, a, let's go for the words personality type do some people thrive in this environment better um you know what what kind of what kind of rate do you find this technique to be successful oh mate that's that's that is the question so Part of my whole philosophy in teaching everything for free on YouTube is out of that frustration from the fake guru still in the courses. I bought so many $2,000 courses that were absolute rubbish. I was just pissed. So here I am teaching everything for free. I mean everything. People aren't doing it. People aren't taking the steps. They're asking stupid questions. They're they're still going. So I'm so I was like, why? Why are these humans not like I've proven it works? I've made millions of dollars online. I'm trying to share. I'm here are the keys to the castle. Let's do this. And nobody's taking action. So I started this little inner circle group to where I could work with people. 100% mindset challenge. It's 100% mindset. And I don't yet know how to fix people's mindsets. Right. I don't know if it's possible to fix people's mindsets. So one of the things I've noticed is ambitious, hungry, ready to do whatever it takes, fired up, generally having hit rock bottom at least once, right? Like there's some correlation of people who've gone through bankruptcy. They've, they've completely fallen on their face. They've, they've gone all in and it didn't work. I bounced off rock bottom twice, had to move back in my parents' house with my wife when I was 30. Um, it was terrible experience because I literally, I sold both our cars for cash to pour it into a business that just folded underneath me. Mm. But the sign of a champion is not someone who never gets knocked down. The sign of a champion is someone who gets back up no matter how many times they get knocked down. Mm. And it's that philosophy, it's that grit, it's that perseverance, it's that willingness to get up time and time again and to let Mike Tyson punch you in the face and to stand (laughs) back up again and take it and stand back up and again and again. With that approach, anyone, everyone who truly commits and persists long enough will eventually find something that works. Then the question is, are they smart enough to just keep doing what worked or are they going to jump to that next shiny object because a fake guru told them email's dead and you have to do messenger bots and they jumped on a webinar and they bought a $2,000 course and now they're letting their WordPress site die. 
Yeah, it's right. an inter- obviously we alluded to that at the beginning, this sort of three year, five year, whatever, big year, um, big number of years cycle. You know, you're not in this for the, the short term. It, it is, as you said, a marathon. You need to keep that pace going. Um, I think that's I think that's really powerful. And you'll probably know for yourself if you've got that in you. You know, if you if you wake up every morning and you you're sort of struggling to get through the, the regular tasks. Well, you, I guess you've got to be questioning, have I got space to to be doing this each and every day? And if the answer is yes, then, uh, you know, it's a goer. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely fascinating. I mean, f- from my point of view, the, the whole sort of WP builds thing uh, is kind of just grown organically. We don't really have a um, we don't really have a product to sell, but I've definitely noticed that just by just being consistent, putting stuff out. I, I don't do daily. I, I produce several pieces of content each week, and it comes out on a sort of regular basis. That's that's been very 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 powerful for me and and the growth of the community that we've got. It's been wonderful. Yeah. And so Google is monitoring your frequency of publishing, right? Yeah. Google Google has to have a way to eliminate people who jump in, they publish a hundred posts and then they disappear. And Google like, oh, you're clearly not an expert on this because you stopped. You have given up on your site. Like a site that doesn't get more content is a site that is dying, um, which is one of the challenges with that whole brochure site where people build like, oh, I got to look at my website. I haven't touched it in five years, but yes. it's really pretty. It's like, eh, that's not going to work. You need to keep updating that thing. And I think, so it's worthy of mentioning the value of choosing a niche or a world that you're at least curious about, Mm. that you have affinity for. The word passion is thrown around. So, oh, well, choose a niche you're passionate about. People who know what they're passionate about don't search things like, how do I choose a niche? They know they're so friggin' enthralled. So I got a mate, he's uh, he's in the UK and he's really into remote control airplanes okay. and he, he builds them, he flies them, he crashes them, he breaks them, he repairs <laughs> them and he flies them some more. And he's got a YouTube channel and he's making, he's selling hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in other people's. RC parts and things because he's just like every day he wakes up like I get to go play with planes today, right? Like literally he gets, the, he's like a, he's a man child essentially. <laughs> and he videotapes himself and his productions got better and, and everything about it is getting better and better. Um, it's that passion. And I would, I would go on a limb and say that you actually love something about WordPress, whether you're like a PHP, like you like the code, whether you like the publishing, whether you like the, like there's something about it that you actually like at a deep level. Oh yeah. And it's that you're sharing that and people feel that. So if I started, I I actually, uh, my place here in Washington, I got uh, just over 20 acres. So, uh, that's like, I don't know, eight hectares or yeah, it's big, really big. (laughs) Yeah. It's ridiculous, right? So the reason I mowing is on my mind is because I'm looking out my yard at a half acre out my window right here, and I know I got 19 and a half above me. I've spent a lot of time listening to audiobooks with my electric mower. That's the only one that's quite enough for me to listen to them. So, and this ain't going away. Every year I'm out there clearing brush, and like it's it, it's a part of my life now. Therefore, it would be logical to potentially build a business around that since I'm probably going to use them so frequently that they're eventually going to break. I'm going to have to buy new ones. I'm right. Like it's a part of my life now. I've committed to that in a sense when I bought this property. So for some people, he's got, you know, a dad might have five kids who are all enthralled with football or soccer or whatever we want to call that sport. And he coaches and he lives and maybe that's just the world they live in. And they just like, that would be great for him to talk about because it, it, they, they they're so passionate about it. They just, it's all they think about. They Mm. literally obsess over it. Mm. I think the, um, I think the obsession thing is, is quite important for the longevity of the project that, that, has always spoken to me something that I'm interested in is going to carry me over the line rather than something that I'm just doing because um, there's money at the end of the rainbow you know if you know what I mean when you run into challenges which are inevitable and you get knocked down the only way you're going to be willing to get up again and again and again is if you're actually naturally curious about it the only way you're going to be willing to read four books the average CEO that makes thousands of times more than the average factory worker reads on average five books a month. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's 60 books a year on average. So you at least have to be interested and intrigued with something to read that many books a year on the topic or else you're just going to get bored and annoyed with it. And I use the Mike Tyson reference. He has a quote. Um, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. 
And, and that's it. We'll come out with this plan. Oh, 90 day challenge. WordPress. Yeah. Okay. I'll do it. And then all of a sudden, like you get punched in the mouth because mm. it's tough and mm. life happens. The, the dog has to go to the vet and you miss a day here. And then, Ooh, do, do, do all this crazy stuff happens. Hmm. Where, where's that motivation to get back up? And yeah. like you said, money is not enough of a motivator. It really needs to be like, I, this is like, I got to mow this lawn whether life happens or not. So I might as well document it and share it. Yeah, good, good point. And what do you think about the whole, you know, the the, the cross-pollination, I'm going to call it, of your content elsewhere? Do you, do you push all your stuff out? So do you use these kind of services which uh, create posts within Facebook and stuff on Twitter to sort of spread the message each time a, a blog post or a new piece of content is created i really don't okay. not much at all um okay. i've got a team i've got a team who we've dabbled in trying to get somebody running my instagram so uh, facebook is just the best distraction mechanism ever created oh it's marvelous oh the distraction is so unbelievably compelling I run a lot of Facebook ads and I'll log in to go access my Facebook ads and I'll just be scrolling, scrolling and I'm mindless like, scroll. What am yeah. I doing? Yeah. And I'll close the window and I'll be like, ah, oh, I just lost 15 minutes. I'm like what? And then I was like, oh wait, I needed to go look at my ads and I log back in and I start scrolling again. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. literally for me, it's like a know thyself. Like if I go on, I just, I literally can't go there. Um, because I'll just get lost and I'll start to think about what other people do and pay attention to other people. And this is very much a, I have a plan. I'm executing my plan. If I stick with these fundamentals for three years, it's going to work. Um, that was my thought with YouTube. I had no YouTube video experience. If somebody wants, if somebody goes to my YouTube channel, search miles Beckler, uh, go watch my first video. You'll see how absolutely terrible it was. And you know, now I have a hundred thousand subscribers in less than three years, like 106,000. Right. And I knew it was going to work because I knew I was just going to show up relentlessly enough. And I knew I had to eliminate every potential distraction, every potential feedback loop for trolls and for random people's comments. I don't need uncle Joe telling me what he thinks about my video because uncle Joe don't get it. Right. <laughs> so I had to literally eliminate all of that and just like run my race do my thing, run my race. And I, I, I knew this was going to work because we did it once before with my wife's business through the written word on a WordPress blog. And, you know, she and I, we both love meditating. We still meditate every day. We sell meditate, like, like every part of our life is still based around meditation to go back to that, do something you love idea. And that was how I had that absolute unwavering conviction that no matter how bad a video was, it's just one on a path to a thousand videos. And by the time I hit that mark, it's going to be remarkable. And sure enough, 550 videos in, I hit the 100,000 mark and I got a silver play button from YouTube, which is crazy. Oh, that's a thing. It is a thing. You get a, you it actually a thing. get a, Oh, okay. I'd heard, I'd heard rumors of this, uh, this uh, apocryphal silver button, but it's true. Oh, that's great. Um, how do you avoid looking at all the sort of trolling stuff and, and it getting to you is there any sort of technique do you just literally not open the comments or do you just blank out the ones that sound like they're going south yeah um and youtube has like the best trolls in the world i mean it is like pro level trolling on youtube for sure <laughs> so i've actually i've actually uh answered uh, well, actually, no, pro level is, is the White House of the United States. That dude is like the best troll in the world for sure, unfortunately. <laughs> but other than that, you know, but he's he's like big time pro level. Anyways, um, I've actually answered almost every single comment. I'm at a point now where I can't. I answered 15,000 comments personally because, again, and I think this is the same on my blog. I try to answer every comment on my blog because that personal touch that when you made that phone call to that guy, it went from being like, I think this guy knows we saw. I think this is real. I think, yeah, I, you were pretty convinced. The moment you talked to him, you're like, yep, this is it. I'm buying from them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that little, like no one in my space will take time to answer all the comments. They'll put up a video that says, you know, how to run Facebook ads. And it's just a seven minute pitch for their webinar that sells their $2,000 course. And they don't respond to anybody. Me, I actually show you how to do what I told you I would show you how to do. And then I actually answer your question in the comments. Mm -hmm. And I'm becoming more real. So I think the brand value is worth it. Uh, anybody says anything snarky, annoying, trollish, I ban them from my comments forever with two clicks. I don't even think if it's even borderline and I'm like, were they just being sarcastic? I don't care. You're gone because, um, it is 
challenging. And I know a lot of people who have turned off comments completely. Um, Seth Godin, who is a brilliant marketer, a brilliant writer, uh, he eliminated his comments from his blog because he was just like, you know what? You don't have a right to comment on my blog. There's no, there's no native right here. Mm -hmm. Um, and Mm -hmm. it was affecting him mentally and it was making him consider not writing. And he was like, if, if I let these randoms convince me to not do my work in the world, that would be a problem. Therefore, let me just eliminate them completely. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good he's point. Done a, he's done a daily blog for 10 years. He's done like 8,000 blog posts, by the way. Just, uh, I think it's <sighs> Seth.blog. He's, have you read his new book, The um, This Is Marketing by Seth? No, Gordon? I have read some of his previous books and I, I completely concur with you. I think he's got an amazing capacity to write. And, and also, you know, the subject matter that he deals with is really in, interesting as well. Yeah, he's got a good podcast, the Akimbo podcast. And wow, I'm just plugging this guy left and right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a, yeah. I listen um, to his stuff. He's one of the good guys. There's so few good guys that when I get a moment to like, you know, praise them and pat them on the back, it's like, ah, he's actually one of the good guys. Um, speaking of um, plugging, um, we are kind of approaching the hour mark. So I'm, I'm going to have to sort of wind things up a little bit, if that's all right. I'm going to ask you to to plug yourself. Now, I know that this is um, something that you, you're not necessarily all that keen to do, but I'm going to make you do it, whether you like it or <laughs> not. Um, where? Tell us the URLs. Tell us the Twitter handles. Tell us the whatever it is that works best for you, for people who've listened to this and thought, do you know what? That Miles Beckler guy is talking some sense. I want to, I want to, be, I want to be near him and, and reach out and find out more about him. Well, cheers. Um, so my name is Miles Beckler, uh, B-E-C-K-L-E-R. I'm the only Miles Beckler in the world. So if you just search on any platform, you'll find me. That's so really wherever lucky. You normally, yeah, right. And I started doing SEO on it early, just in case somebody decides to, you know, name jack me or anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, just search for me anywhere. I blog at milesbeckler.com. My YouTube channel is, uh, you know, Miles Beckler, and I'm most active on on YouTube. And um, I'm a little bit on social, but honestly, that's probably my virtual assistant, my teammates post in there. And really, I'm just, I, I don't know. I'm trying to get the right words out. Uh, search YouTube for help, keyword research. I have five keyword research videos that show you how to do it for free, show you how to do it with a paid tool. Like I've literally, I got a two hour S- learn SEO master course. And here's a credibility factor, I guess, real quick before we're done. Go to YouTube. Since you've probably never seen me before, I'm talking to the, the listener here. Uh, just search Learn SEO in YouTube. And I'm going to put a bet out there, put a little wager out there that, that I'm the number one video for Learn SEO on all of YouTube, outranking people who have $1,000 courses and $2,000 courses on SEO and YouTube SEO. Nice. So that's the proof in the pudding that, that this stuff actually works. And then watch it because it's telling you how to do SEO and then the keyword research and um, just – Go crush it with whatever you do, man. Our world needs more positive voices. Like watch a video, but go publish. That's the work. That's the key is do the work. And on that on that note, I think I'm going to say thank you, Miles Beckler, for talking to us today. Have a nice day. Cheers, Nathan. Thanks for having me on. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that podcast. It was very interesting chatting to Miles Beckler because this is an area I feel that I have almost zero expertise in. I'm not very good at being... Um, aware of what the SEO impact of my content is, although I'm writing in the WordPress sphere, I just kind of hammer out the posts and don't really dwell on that kind of stuff. But it's really interesting if you want to go down that route, especially I would have thought for people who would like to monetize their content and perhaps become kind of some internet marketer. WordPress, of course, is the ultimate platform for that. It allows your content to stick around and have a very long shelf life. And of course, it allows you to edit it in the future should your SEO data imply that that might need to be the case. Anyway, I hope that you learned something from it. That is always the intention of this podcast. The WP Builds podcast was brought to you today by WP and Op. One in four of us will be directly affected by mental health related illness. WP and Op supports and promotes positive mental health within the WordPress community. This is achieved through mentorship, events, training and counselling. Please help enable WP and Op by visiting wpandop.org forward slash give. Okay, I would love it if you came back and joined us next week for the Thursday. It's every Thursday, the podcast that we put out. Don't forget, every Monday, two bits of content. I'll release the WordPress news and the live news. You can find all of that on the WPBuilds.com website. And so, as with every week, I shall fade out and say bye-bye for now. Here comes some cheesy music. <laughs>